A new University of Otago study on the effects of fluoride has shown children in non-fluoridated areas have more severe tooth decay. The study adds new information on an issue that's been in the news recently. The DCC this year moved to slightly lower the level of fluoride in water as it faced calls for its removal. Professor of Dental Epidemiology and Public Health Murray Thompson is here to explain what his study found. Good evening Professor Thompson. Good evening Rebecca. Tell us a little <coughs> bit about what you were looking at in the study. Well what, what we set out to, to, to look at was to find out whether children at the, the, the high end of the, the, the tooth decay experience distribution um, well, let me start again. We, every, every year in, in, in New Zealand, about 5,000 children, small children, have to be treated under general anaesthetic because they've got too much tooth decay. We set out looking at, at the, the last 10 years of, uh, uh, worth of cases in, in Otago to, to see whether there was a difference by fluoridation status, whether kids, um, you know, whether the... Yeah, th those from the, the um, areas without community water fluoridation had more decay. And uh, essentially, that's what we found. And they were also younger on average mm. as well. And these, these are kids at the very high decay experience end of the distribution. Mm. What sort of age group was studied? <coughs> these were children younger than six. Okay. How many people were well, included? Six or younger. How many yeah. people were included in the study? Just under 1,400, 1,396. And all from around Otago only? Yes. Mm. yes. What did you find? Well, we found that the children from the non fluoridated areas presented on average um, younger by two months, and for any given baby tooth, you know, we've got 20 baby teeth in the mouth, for any given tooth, um, there were more teeth affected. Uh, yeah, a higher percentage of teeth were, were affected in, in their mouths. So mm. they, they had considerably more tooth decay and they were presenting at a younger age. So they were being referred younger, indicating that their, their tooth decay burden was, was considerably higher mm. than that in the, uh, in the children from the fluoridated areas. So considering <coughs> the findings, what are your thoughts on the importance of fluoridating the water? Well, I think it's, it's, it, it's very important. It's, it's been called one of the, the um, ten greatest public health initiatives of the 20th century and, um, you know, tooth decay is the most common disease affecting humankind and it's, it's responsible for a great deal of suffering out there. And we know that um, the average person in the community, and this is not just children, this is right through life, the average person in the community experiences one new tooth surface becoming decayed every year. And so some people experience more than that and some people experience quite a lot less. Mm. And um, it, it's just one of these diseases that, you know, has a, you know, it, it's relatively simple as a disease, but it, it has these far-reaching effects. And community water fluoridation puts, it, it adjusts the concentration of fluoride in, in the, the water we're drinking from about 0.3 parts per million to about, 0.7 to 0.8 parts per million. And that's enough to considerably reduce our tooth decay experience year by year. You know. There have been increasing <coughs> calls in Dunedin for fluoride to be removed from the water. What are your thoughts around that? Well, increasing calls from a, a small group of people who have an agenda. Um, I think if we were to take it out of the water, um, it would be a retrograde step. We'd find more children having to be treated under general anaesthetic. We'd find that you, people like you and I would have more tooth decay. You know, we have 94% of dentists in New Zealand support community water fluoridation. You know, yet the one or two, you know, the, the small proportion who um, don't support it, they get a lot of air time, you know. But you've got to ask yourself, you know, if a profession like dentistry supports something that reduces its workload, you know, they, it, it's got to be good. You know, I don't want to keep... Yeah, to pay more and more of my salary to, to uh, dentists, I'd rather spend it on mm -hmm. good stuff. Mm -hmm. Professor Murray yeah. Thompson from the University of Otago, thanks very much for your time.